All right, so the first thing we gotta do is watch someone do it properly. So here's a video I took of the Polish tennis player Hubert Hurkacz at the Australian Open this year. He's a perfect example of the forehand lagging snap. Now let's watch this frame by frame shot here. Pay attention to how from the top of his backswing, the racket starts dropping below the line of the ball that was hit to him. The racket face is gonna be pointing towards the ground. And now he starts accelerating through the shot towards the ball creates a lot of extension separation between him and the ball and he makes contact and his racket moves away and around his body that's the perfect example of the forehand lag and snap so here's where i think most people struggle with this movement right here from the top of their back swings to the bottom is where i see amateurs making a huge mistake they end up just trying to place the racket down there without fully continuing their, their back swings. Here's how it looks. Ooh, that looks bad. <laughs> All right, let me show you the biggest mistake I see amateurs doing when trying to create wrist leg. Pay attention to my racket. So I take it back, I deliberately place it down and end up tucking my elbow away, which completely disrupts the flow of my shot. So this is one of my students. We only started working a couple weeks ago and he's a very good player all around, very good strokes, but he was struggling a little bit on the forehand side when it came to me. So we took this video about a week ago and as you can tell, he's really trying to create a lot of lag on the forehand side. Doesn't have any problems with bracket head speed to be honest, but he was just very inconsistent and making a lot of mistakes on the forehand. So I asked him what was his thought process on the forehand side and he told me that from the top of his backswing, he was trying to drop the racket low in order to create more racket head speed. And because of that, he was too reliant on his hands and wrists in order to make good contact with the ball. And from a personal experience, I know that for a fact, if you rely too much on your hands, you're, go you're bound to be more erratic. And another problem with his thought process was that he was so focused on his hands and, and arms that he wasn't moving his feet properly. He wasn't creating the right amount of space between him and the ball. And because of that, he was even more reliant on his wrists and hands to fix any mistakes he made with his feet. And that just makes you more prone to errors. So we needed to fix that. So here's what we did. So here's how he was hitting his forehand today. It's not dramatically different, but it, there are a few things that we're focusing on. First, it's forgetting about dropping the racket low. Instead, I want him to focus on keeping his elbow away from his body throughout the forehand, which makes it flow better. The second thing is focusing on moving his feet and creating the right amount of space between him and the ball. This way, he's able to create more power using his body weight instead of his wrists and hands. And the last thing I want him to focus on is his follow through. I want the racket to move upwards and around his body after he makes contact with the ball in order to create a better shot shape. Space it. Foot. <laughs> 